check, 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 check. What is up, guys? It's Dr. Quads, and I would like to show you the TRV 900, but I'm, I'm actually filming with it right there, so. I went from the Sony Alpha 1 to the Sony TRV 900, and that's, of course, why you see these black bars, because it's a 4x3, not a 16x9. I love the vintage look, which is why I switched. However, I'm not super keen on having as low as resolution as possible. I don't think that's exactly why the 3 CCD sensor was so good. And I also don't really like messing with tapes, having to play them back, put them over Firewire, using like $100 worth of Apple proprietary connectors just to get it into my Thunderbolt port. And that's why I bought the Sony uh, HVRA CR1, which is their DV recorder that connects to Firewire to your camera. This thing would be probably pretty awesome on a bigger camera, but using the TRV900, which is actually kind of a hand mount here, and you're using like one of those old style camcorders, this thing comes off the top and it's already a bit heavy and it makes it really unwieldy. Not to mention too, you have to press both of these buttons to start recording. Now, I actually planned on making my own Firewire recorder because I have a lot of friends in the manufacturing industries and we're always doing like projects together. And I said, hey, this could be something really cool because I paid 50 1500 RMB for this and that was a good deal. I think this is like $300 or something. And indeed we did figure it out. But then of course we hit the brick wall of Apple. Firewire is an Apple proprietary connector and you basically just can't innovate with it. It's disgusting. I really hate Apple so much. But what can we do with how encumbersome this is on the TRV900 is of course, as you see here, make a custom battery. The reason why is because both this and the TRV900 and pretty much every other battery at the time was using the Sony NP F550 or the F570. However, what I then found out was that Sony has some sort of proprietary chip called InfoLithium. Now, a lot of people probably know about this. I just learned about this today. This is an InfoLithium chip, and without it, your camera will not work. Now, this will actually work without the InfoLithium chip, but the camera, the TRV900, will not. So we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to take apart a battery rather than build our own. I took apart this InfoLithium chip equipped uh, Sony NP F570, and I wish I could show you on camera how to do it, but I wanted to make sure that I knew how to do it correctly before I actually showed you. And the easiest way really is just um, when this is on here, okay, you're just gonna take a razor blade that isn't broken. <laughs> So what I did was I just took this razor blade here and I just kind of scored across, scored across, scored across. I kind of went around. Take your time. You don't want to go too far where you scratch the battery. You're going to take the X-Acto knife and you're going to press it into the corners of this crack right here and just kind of press, press, press until eventually you'll get some give. Once you feel that there's some give, you're going to grab yourself a tiny little flathead screwdriver and just kind of place it in there and kind of twist it to pop it around. Just twist, 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 twist. Uh, if you do it right and you take your time and you use the X-Acto knife as much as possible without cutting the battery or anything like that, you're going to get a clean cut. But if you don't get a clean cut, that's okay. Listen, these things aren't going to look like they're coming straight out of the factory. I don't expect it to. But once you get it open, you then will have everything you need. First things first, we're going to go ahead and cut this wires or something. Yeah. Okay, cutting that. Cutting that, okay. Here, I'm trying not to let any of these things touch each other, right? I don't want to um, bridge a connection. Oh, I probably cut that a little too shallow, but that's okay. Could try to give it a little bit more so it's easier to solder. Okay, so we have these two batteries here. We could probably reuse those. I did finally fi find what I think is an InfoLithium chip on Taobao. So that will let me, uh, you know, like not have to buy a whole like completed battery and take it apart. They actually sell what seems to be some sort of kit that you can just, it's just the, the chip and the connector. So that's awesome because I have plenty of these little 18650. I have plenty of these cells. The desk is pretty messy because I was doing some building yesterday and I haven't had quite the time to clean it up perfectly, but let's go ahead and pre-tin this. I'm gonna be as fast on the heat as possible. You don't wanna heat this battery up. Probably use a little bit of flux, but there's no flux in here. Okay, there we go. Okay. That's pretty well fused. Think these two together.
Okay. And we do just want to double check that it still works. Grab this here. Switch it to 20 volts in the negative, in the positive. It's no longer working. What has happened? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just can't get into it because they would never understand. Hey guys, this is Dr. Quaz from the future. So I actually closed the video out and I thought I had fried all of the batteries that I was willing to destroy. Um, because what happened was is after doing some cutting or soldering or whatever I was doing and also testing with the multimeter, suddenly the batteries, though, they were giving an 8.2 volt reading from the multimeter. So I looked into it online and I found that the infolithium chip can indeed ha it like shuts itself off so it's got protection protocols on it so that if it detects too much current being drawn that's not something within the realm of a camcorder uh, or if there's some sort of polarity issue whatever it's just gonna like shut off this terminal i don't know the exacts about what shuts off or what doesn't but the way i solved it was by just plugging it into the charger and it seemed to reset the chip and indeed now I'm able to test them both because I did this one first and it uh, succeeded. Eight point two volts, nice. And then of course I plug this one into the charger to hope. Uh, let's just say, kick start it, jolt it, do whatever it is, shake it loose, and bam, eight point two. So we're good to go. I even dared risk frying my camera again <laughs> and i plugged it into the camera and indeed it works i'm really happy with that that means i didn't waste a 100 bucks today because <laughs> i ended up taking apart a bunch of batteries and uh well yeah we have gotten almost to where we need to go so now we've got to rig up a power solution all right let's kind of just get in here and start working away at it we're going to take our time i kind of like drawing with the soldering iron, you kind of draw, you kind of sketch it until it starts creating grooves, which helps you maintain your shape. There we go. Yeah, so that, that way you're kind of able to force that plastic because it's a little bit melted, you know. <sighs> cancer. <laughs> I'm going to get cancer for all this, I swear to God. <sighs> One of the reasons why I should open this door. <laughs> One of the reasons why I redesigned my studio was so that I get airflow because I'm this door right here. So, and I've just been doing so much of this kind of stuff. It's just very foolish of me not to utilize. It. I need to get a fan. There's a lot. There's a lot still we got to build here. Hopefully we don't get cancer before we do it. All right, so that's kind of good enough, I guess. Um, I'm not going to be happy with it to be honest, but that's okay. This is a Oof, let's not cut our fingers. All right, actually worked. Definitely will 3D print one that's like, you know, looks really nice and maybe even has some other features. I'm not happy with uh, this melty plastic version, but it is a good prototype. All right, there we go. It doesn't look too bad, to be honest. Could be better, but uh, it could be worse. So if you see here, there's like a flat side. Now it actually even has a plus on it too. The flat side of this is the positive. Okay. solder
Okay. So now that it's connected to the infolithium, I can open this up and remove whatever controller's in here. Yeah, I don't even think they pre this wire at all. Gee. Jeez. You can see the individual strands. You shouldn't see the individual strands. You want a big solder blob. Okay. Eight point two. Old and strong, nice and solid. No weird stuff going on. I think that's it, boys. I think this controller is pro it probably was fine to keep in there, but you know, you just I I don't really know enough about batteries to know if that might like undervolting it might put the current too high and you know maybe could melt something. I don't really mind the battery melting to be honest, but like. I definitely don't want this very expensive Sony controller suffering any damage. Now, most of these things have a lot of protections built into them. Back in the day when the manufacturer actually wanted you not to break your stuff and they provided you with documentations and things like that to help you. Uh, but nowadays, most manufacturers want you to break your stuff and they don't want you to fix it because they just want you to buy a new one. I, I think this is going to be just fine E700, not the strongest glue in the world. But it is some of the easiest. Liquid electrical tape. I'm going to put some of this around here. Just kind of making sure that nothing contacts anything. This stuff is cheap, so no reason to skimp. Yeah, I'm going to put some on this right here. There we go. And uh, do I put some in here? Don't really see a purpose in that. Well, if it like came desoldered or something, maybe would then short the battery. Like I said, stuff is cheap. No reason to skimp. Okay, that'll do it. And okay, now we want to just like squeeze this into the gaps and just fill this thing up all those gaps in there with this E7000 I'm gonna then squeeze some of this all around the perimeter to close this up this stuff is non-conductive so no need to worry I think it's silicon based Plunk, and that is squeezing out the sides, which I like, because now I just get a napkin, rub it along. I'm gonna tape this up, that way I'm not having to hold it. Gaff tape, if you know, you know. If you don't, I'm sorry for your loss. Just give it a nice tight seal, and there we go. Okay, guys, uh, obviously I don't have my camera set up to see me because it's on the desk right now, but I think it's about time to test this bad boy out. Let's, uh, let's give it a go. It works. Okay, camera's on. Well, we gotta take... Take the gaff tape off this. And voila, we did it. Looks like it's working. So one battery solution for both your recorder and your camera. And you know, it's modular. I'm gonna make a really awesome 3D printed battery. Not gonna be as strong as this injection molded battery, obviously, but hey, don't drop your camera, right? Um, but yeah, it seems to be working just fine. And now that lets me 
mount this up like this, right? And so it's just a little bit easier for me to operate this camera without this thing sticking way off up out on the top. I'll have to think of a good way to mount this up here. Definitely won't be using this anymore. This thing was a nightmare. Yeah, something like this. Now I made this cord pretty short, but luckily I can lengthen it pretty easily. I'm starting to see that it's, uh, but I would actually like it this way because that just keeps it as unencumbersome as possible. Yeah, and then I'll mount this up with a cold shoe mount probably built into the 3D printing. I'll have a hot shoe on that. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out and uh, learning with me as I learned. I hope you learned as well. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're inclined, I'd greatly appreciate anyone out there willing to support me on Patreon. It goes a long way to keeping this channel running. Until next time, I'll catch you late.